Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Mac Gardner. I am a certified financial planner, uh, author, and founder of Finlit Tech. I want to thank you all so much for joining us today for my breakout session, our breakout session, um, financial literacy and making it a financial affair. So uh, hopefully folks that are on this uh, breakout session heard my earlier message about uh, your financial journey and what your finances mean to you. What we're gonna be doing in this breakout session is talking a little bit more about how do we talk about finances as a family? And if you happen to be a family with young children, how do you start that conversation with young kids? So just to, um, just to rehash, my first book is Motivate Your Money. I wrote this one for adults. My second book was The Four Money Bears, or is The Four Money Bears. I'd like to tell you a little story about uh, how, how these books came to be. And hopefully that can paint a picture as to how we can start having conversations about money as family. So as a financial planner, I work with people from various uh, levels of wealth. And one of the things that I noticed was an issue was no matter how much money these folks had, there really wasn't a lot of baseline education about personal finance, about the various tools that are out there and really how money should work uh, work for you. So in my first book, I talk about the five steps to financial success. You have to plan accordingly, spend cautiously, save diligently, invest wisely, and give generously. Now, in doing all of that, what we're doing is we're starting these healthy habits, hopefully early in our lives, that will allow us to understand when we realize money, recognize what money does, and then rationalize how we do it. Now, as an adult, it's a bit of a different game, right? You have your job, you're doing various things. And when you're a single person, you're not really having that many conversations about money. You may be having it with mom and dad, you may be having it with your, co your co-workers or your colleagues, but the conversation really um, isn't that deep. Then all of a sudden <clears throat> you may get into a relationship with someone, right? And this could be your girlfriend, a boyfriend, and then you're trying to find out about compatibility, right? <laughs> Uh, about talking about a subject that a lot of people sadly don't talk about. So one of the things that I like to share with people when we're talking about opening conversations and talking about money, and we're talking now, you know, as adults, is ask a pretty straightforward question to someone. What are your thoughts on money? Or what do you think about money? Or how do you feel about money? Very open-ended question, non-threatening question, what it allows you to do is to really get an understanding of that other person's experience. How do they feel about money? Well, some people may say, eh, you know, it's there, it's just something that I need. Um, some people may have a very emotional connection uh, because a lot of times money and finances are intertwined and, and help drive our behaviors or have a lot of history behind it good or bad, you know, if you're working with someone or you're, you're in a relationship with somebody that really has a bad relationship with money, you're going to want to understand what that means to them and what that means for you as you're entering into this relationship, because you're not just bringing together two families, you're not just bringing together, um, you know, two, two, two people with different minds, you're also bringing together two different mindsets of money and how money is managed. And I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with folks uh, and uh, had to deal with some unpleasant conversations that deal with finances because it's not an open conversation. So uh, from a family perspective, as an adult, as a grown person, you definitely want to be open in the conversations that you're having uh, with people that you're you know, going to be having a, a forming a relationship with because it's money isn't going anywhere and it's going to be a part of your life for a long time. So you want to make sure uh, that you're on the same page or at least not too far away <laughs> from each other when you're dealing with money <clears throat> and you're, you're having conversations about, about finances. Now, let's just say you're in a relationship with this person, things are moving along, you both have good jobs, maybe one works, but one, one doesn't work, but you're moving along nicely and all of a sudden you have a, 
a, a, a bundle of joy that, that comes into your life and comes into your, uh, your, your home. And you are now responsible for explaining <laughs> personal finance to this kiddo. Now, there was a Cambridge study done a few years ago that revealed to folks that a child's connectivity with money starts as early as age seven, sometimes as early as age five. So a lot of times folks would come to me and say, hey, Mac, <clears throat> what's the best age to start talking to my kids about money? You know, um, if you as the adult never got that conversation from your parents, it's really hard to start that conversation with your children. So that is how the story of the Full Money Bears came to be, was I was an advisor working with a client and she was on the board of, of an organization in Houston. And she said, Mac, you know, love your Mac Nuggets, love the first book. Would you be open to writing something for kids? And I looked at her and I said, well, um, you know, how, how young are we talking about here? And uh, we both had young children at the time. And so that's how the idea of the Four Money Bears came to be. I took a few of the, 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 the pieces from Motivate Your Money and the fact that there are only four things you can do with money, spend it, save, invest, or give it away. We created this concept of the Four Money Bears. There's spend a bear, save a bear, invest a bear, and give a bear. The story actually is a little bit deeper. Um, we have three kids, my wife, Jan, and I, and we found that we would go to the store with our kids, right? And you go to a store, and the first place the child runs off to is the toy aisle, right? They always want toys, 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 are candy, those are two things the kids want. And so as an advisor, I just found that really, you know, that's kind of sad <laughs> that, you know, that's that, that I, though we were fortunate to be able to do this, it's like, you know what, th th there needs to be a teachable moment here. <clears throat> And so the book is actually the story of me sitting with my children and staying, asking them, hey, you know what? What are your options when you get money? What, 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 what can you do? And one option that young people typically say is, yeah, I can buy stuff, okay? The second option that young people typically say is, well, I can save it. And so a lot of times young people, young minds are very familiar with those two functions because we live in a, you know, consumer-based economy, consumer-based society, where you have to buy things in order to, to survive and maintain your lifestyle. But I was like, you know what? I don't think these children understand that they actually have four choices. So they can spend it, they can save it, but they can also invest it, right? Uh, or they could give it away. And so the story of the Four Money Bears, what we're doing is we're introducing to young people and, and sometimes parents, because you know, never too, uh, never too old to learn that all four functions of money, there's a pro and a con, right? There's Spender Bear who saves every dollar he, he gets in his pocket, right? If you go through the book, he has all the coolest scooters and he has a candy, he has everything. But if you spend everything, you have nothing left over. Then we go to Saver Bear who just hoards money and keeps money, but she doesn't spend, she doesn't invest, doesn't give. Then you go to Investor Bear and this is when we introduce young people to the concept of investing and make it very clear that saving and investing are two different things, right? Saving, you put your money in the bank, you put your money somewhere and your money will be there when you need it. With investing, you can either have more money a year from now or you could potentially have less money a year from now. But over the long term, that's how you grow wealth and that's how you can grow your money um, to be able to pass it on and, and, and uh, do, do greater things uh, for potential growth. And then you have the option of giving and giving money is just as important as all the others, because there's always going to be someone out there that is in a, not in a, as good as a position as you are. But with giving, right, giving is good. But if you give everything away, you can have people that will take advantage of you and, and, and not necessarily be a good thing. So what we're trying to get across with this Full Money Bears book is that there are four functions and that all four functions need to work together, right? We need to give our money direction. We need to give it a budget. And so what we're doing is we're introducing to young people at a very early age, the pros and cons of each function, the fact that each function of money needs to work together, right? And that once you learn to spend cautiously, save diligently, invest wisely and give generously, 
that's so that, that, for, that forms the uh, the building blocks of, of a young person's uh, financial journey because once they understand that you know hey I, I I have other options besides just spending all of it or just saving it that they can do other things they can start rationalizing uh, their choices there so uh, again the four money bears book is was created to help start the conversation a fun and entertaining way. We have worksheets in there, uh, very colorful worksheets. Maybe if I could flip through this, I'm not sure how good the camera is here, but uh, just to show you, the artwork is amazing. Here's some of the worksheets that we have showing kids what you can use to spending, what they can use to save. Uh, I'll go to the front here as well. Some of the great artwork talking about the differences between spending and saving. So, and then this is fun. Folks like to see this at the beginning. Uh, the kids in the toy aisle, and then the family in the car driving to the store, and here are the four money bears. So, as you can see, it's 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 a it's a very easy read. Um, we know that young people uh, have very short attention spans, <laughs> so we want to make it something where a child can run through with a parent, read it, understand it, have some worksheets in the back, and then um, you know the kids look at money differently. And then at the back of every book, we've provided <clears throat> worksheets for every day of the year. So we wrote the book. The book is a great uh, resource. We feel very fortunate, very blessed that folks around the world are utilizing our book. Financial advisors are using the book. But one of the common refrains that we get from people is, Mac, love the book, but is there some sort of digital platform? And so that's what we're doing at, at Finlet Tech is our mantra is to build a bridge between financial literacy and financial technology, because what we found is that there's a lot of technology out there that folks are using on a daily basis to help do things with their money, right? Uh, banking, investing, lending, a lot of other good stuff, but there really isn't a lot of technology out there that's helping to teach people what to do with their money uh, and provide education, financial literacy, financial education. So uh, we have developed the Four Money Bears, Berryville. Uh, for those of you who are out there in front of your laptop or uh, have access to looking at a website, you know, don't, don't turn away now, but at some point in time, if you go to www.thefour, T-H-E-F-O-U-R, Money Bears, M-O-N-E-Y-B-E-A-R-S.com, um, you learn a little bit about our platform and our, our Teach Kids Money mission and what we're building to really make an impact in, uh, in the lives of, of young people and the lives of societies and uh, communities uh, that really have been overlooked or underserved. And, and also, you know, just provide folks with an on-ramp, right? If you're going to be learning about finances, start it early. Um, share these stories. I'm a huge fan, and I may mention this early today, that uh, all we are at the end of our day is a collection of stories. So some families and some children get stories about saving and investing and why it's important to have a business and you know, why it's important to manage your money. Um, but sadly, you know, because financial literacy, financial education really isn't uh, a mainstay, at least here in the United States, uh, those stories really aren't shared very often. And so we are working daily to, to build the tools that can um, provide families with young kids those resources and, and those, those opportunities uh, to, to give their children a much better financial outcome later on in life. And so Full Money Bears is the beginning to give you all a little bit of insight, what we're working on. Uh, our next book is going to be, uh, it's, it's titled The Full Money Bears Go to the Bank. And it's going to introduce children to Banker Box Turtle, Lender Lion, Omnibus Owl, and Crypto Cat. So the next platform We'll also be incorporating these characters in the, in the game as well. Uh, it's going to be introducing you know, young people to, to banking, the difference between a checking account, a savings account, a CD, going to introduce children to um, lending, uh, the difference between a credit card versus an auto loan versus a home loan versus a personal loan, different types of lending, secured versus unsecured uh, debt. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about Omnibus um, Owl, which talks about stocks, and bonds, and mutual funds, and ETFs. And uh, we had quite a few questions this morning about, um, about 
cryptocurrency. So we actually have CryptoCat, who is going to uh, educate young people about blockchain, cryptocurrencies, uh, DeFi, and things along those lines. So there is a ton of great information that's out there. What we're looking to do is to really uh, build out that platform that will allow folks to, to take their content, to take their education, um, and, and then digitize it and get it to more people uh, in the world. So, so now we talked about uh, having financial conversations when you're a single person. We talked about having conversations when you enter into a relationship. And we've talked about um, having conversations with folks that are younger, right? The last thing I just wanted to touch on is the importance for those of you who are who are uh, who are a bit older, maybe have older older kids, is the importance of having conversations about money to the next generation. If you have adult children, I cannot tell you how many times I've done financial plans for people that have money, even if it's not a lot of money, and I sit and I ask them, hey. You know, thanks for putting this together. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you in any way, shape, or form. You know, are your children aware of your financial situation? And I can't tell you how many times they say no, they're not. <laughs> and a lot of times, the the reason they're concerned is twofold. One, they don't want their children to know their business, which which is which is understandable. Um, if if financial conversations were never really uh, done in the home before, why would it all of a sudden start when a person's later on in age? Um, that's one. The second one is they, they 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 just don't know how to start the conversation. And so what I would say to that for those of you who are thinking about having conversations with your older kids, if you have things to pass on, is the the other side to that scenario is typically confusion and hurt uh, and a lot of bad things because that person that's now going to be responsible for dealing with those finances is totally unaware and doesn't understand and doesn't know what needs to be done to prepare. That is often way worse of a result or reaction than sitting down and explaining to this person, this younger, this, 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 your children, exactly what needs to be done and why it's being done. Um, there's something called a, a, letter, a, a family love letter when it comes to being able to translate or express to your heirs or other generations your financial situation because a lot of times it's not just finances. A lot of times there are emotional ties, again, to how that money, how that wealth, how that business uh, got to be and the, the role it serves in that generation's life that they want to be able to pass on to that next generation. So for those of you out there that are listening and looking for a good way to, to, to get that message started, get the communication started, writing a letter is, is extremely powerful. And it's something that you can share with family members, ask them to open it at a certain time. Um, and then, you know, from there, that could be a way to say, oh, okay, I didn't realize this is this is and third. Because here's something to, to, to think about. Uh, here in, 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 in the States, when we're dealing with financial wealth management, um, inherited assets usually are gone in about 18 months. So what that means is that you can have one generation that has worked to build up money for years, and then all of a sudden, imagine in a year and a half, everything that that generation built up is gone and there's nothing else to pass on. And, and typically the reason for that is, is, is lack of education and lack of communication uh, and lack of having someone in their lives to just to give some sort of guidance. So. Um, uh, I, I've given you hopefully three different perspectives to, to engage in dealing with your finances and engage in having conversations um, when it comes to financial literacy and financial education. Um, you know, I think I'm looking at the, the time now, uh, Megan and Dorit, I think we've allowed for maybe five or 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm saying it perhaps your next book, Mac. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I, I've, I've had quite a few people asking me, Mac, when's the next book coming out? Not for kids, for adults. And so, you know, constantly making notes and, and working at working in the manuscript. I've got my, i got my, my black manuscript here that I'm continually jotting things down. So, we will see. <laughs>
All right, so let's um, let's let's open up the uh, uh, generational wealth. Next topic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Generational wealth. I think um, I think a lot of focus needs to be put on the importance of gener generational wealth. Um, my website name. I have a couple. I'll put on here. www.thefourmoneybears.com um, when it comes to generational wealth, I think it's really important for folks to, to really understand uh, that I tell people all the time, I say, hey, do you remember your great, 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 great grandfather's name? And they'll say, no, who does? I say, well, the DuPonts do, the Rockefellers do, you know, uh, they, they are families that have perpetuated wealth for years because they understood how the system works, right? And it's important to understand that our bodies are physical, right? And our bodies in time will pass away, but your financial body can live for decades, right? And that financial body starts literally the day that you earn that first paycheck. Um, you know, there are families in the Caribbean that their names are synonymous with wealth because those families created businesses or created ventures that continue to go. I mean, you can remove colonialism and Europe and Britain and all that stuff, um, but that's, that's, a, that's something, a message I really try to get across to people is that you have a financial body that can theoretically live for years if you plan properly and if you do the right things with your finances. Um, it could be extremely beneficial to those down the road. So that's the full money beers.com. I'll put the other one on there, www.finlittech.com. That is my, my technology company, Finlit Tech, that we're, we're building these um, financial solutions for the younger generation and eventually for all others. Um, any other questions? Good stuff. about anything, about having conversation with money, about finances, you name it, I'm happy to help. Happy to talk. Mm. Nothing. I, I, I must have done a, a great job, Dorita and Megan, because I, I answered every question. Everyone got everything they needed to get uh, out of that. Uh, oh, oh, very, oh man, oh, see, you, you leave the best for last, I love it. All right, so <clears throat> the question that came up was, um, what's your take on these debit cards for kids being advertised? All right, so here's my take. Um, da, 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 very, yeah. So here's my take, great question. The first thing that folks need to understand is engaging young people and having a conversation about the difference between a debit card and a credit card, right? First thing first, with a credit card, you're borrowing somebody else's money. And if you're lending somebody money, they're gonna charge you. So there's a cost for that. With a debit card, right? That's your own money. So if you walk into a store and you wanna buy something for $50, there needs to be $50 in your bank account. Otherwise you're not walking out the store with that, with that, with that you know, product or that thing. Um, with regard to these debit cards that are being advertised, money is just a tool. Credit cards are just tools. Debit cards are just tools, right? Good or bad can come out of a tool. So the, these companies are marketing cards to parents, right, in order to get them to use their solution. It's just a different way to, add, to advertise or market it the knowledge behind how to use it is what's important. That's really the most important thing behind it because these tools are coming. There's gonna come a time where you won't even need a car. You just be able to have your phone and you'll be able to just touch things with your phone because all of our information is, is gonna be right here. So then it's not really if the tool is good or bad, it's, it's the knowledge behind it. That's, what, that's, that's my personal thought on it and, and teaching our young people uh, the importance of utilizing the right tools. Um, very well, yes. Uh, so the question is earlier from before, uh, the name of the project we're talking about. Oh, um, 
the four money bears Berryville. If you go to that website, www.thefourmoneybears.com, you will see the video of the uh, Berryville app that we're developing to uh, help children and parents with young children when it comes to about managing money and dealing with money. Was there a new question that came up? My son's nine, daughter's 12, always ask how much money do I make monthly? What's the best answer based on the ages? Okay, this is gonna sound very facetious, but I tell my kids the same thing, enough. How much, mom, how much money do you make, Papa? Enough. <laughs> See the lights on? <laughs> See food in your belly? See you able to get air there, there? You have enough. Now, <clears throat> what you can start doing at nine and 12 is actually making them aware of the types of bills and the types of things that are coming into the household, right? That need to be paid in order for them to have the lifestyle they live, right? We explain to our kids, okay, this is the value of the house. In order for us to have this house, there's something called the mortgage. The mortgage is X. If we don't pay the mortgage, <laughs> we don't have a home. This is a car. I get you here to there. We have to pay X for the car. This is electricity. If we don't pay this, this doesn't come on. This is water. So I think age nine and 12 are great ages to prepare them for the real world because you're going to blink their eye and they're going to be out and they're going to have jobs. So I think it's a good idea. Um, explain to them what taxes are. Explain to them the fact that when you get your first paycheck, there's going to be some withholdings potentially in there. And this is what they're there for. Um, I, so I, I hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that answers the question and puts a little smile on your face here. But it's not necessarily there's an old adage in our business. It's not what you have is what you have left. All right. It's not what you make. It's what you have left. There are tons of people that make a lot of money and they spend it all. Uh, so it's important for young people to understand that spending cautiously. Again, if we make X, we, we always want to spend less than X. Great question. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else? Good stuff. Very well, sure. Did. The name of the project you're talking about. Uh, trying to carve uh, uh, uh. All right. Well, uh, looks like we're. Wait. Let me see. Yes. Let's see a little red one pop up. Okay, that was. Uh, that was. Uh, that was. That was done. All right. Well, everyone, thanks again for the time. Uh, hopefully, you got a little bit of, of use out of the uh, the time together uh, with me today um, huge fan of of educating people when it comes to their finances and financial literacy the financial life journey is a long one a very long one and there's lots of hills and, and there's lots of valleys uh and challenges out there but um you know reach out there's plenty of resources to help you in your guidance uh help provide guidance on your journey and as i like to say the journey continues take care everyone bye